So, do you need help getting off the fence? We're going to give you a push. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And this is an amazing life. This RV life, it was not even on my radar two years ago. A little, well, a little more than two years ago. It has totally changed my life in a good way, and we're here to talk about it. That's right. You know, we talk to so many people who are at home and they just wish they could join us. And I have a couple little stories to tell. One is about how much this book means to me. I bought this book in 1992, and that's when my dream began. Well, how long did it take me to get out on the road? 25 years. In fact, almost 26 years. And this is what we want to point out, is there may be a way where you can start right now and get out here. We talk to people that are on the fence and they're just not... They're not ready to make the plunge, you know, yeah. that, that, uh, you know, make that, that, that last step into, into this lifestyle. And I get it. I don't know if impossible, but it would have been very difficult to do this life in my, in my, in my, during my working life. All right. Well, and that's what we want to talk about because some of you can, if you're a year or two from retirement and you're like, okay, when I retire, I'm going to go full time. Well, you might be able to do it now. You might be able to get an RV and move into it live in your backyard, rent your house out, and still go to work and then travel on weekends. Or maybe you're saving for an RV and you've got this beautiful, perfect one in mind. You know, maybe you could get a starter RV, even if it's only on weekends. But at least, you know, get out here and get a taste of this life. And to the point about get a starter RV, we've met a lot of people in RVs. There are cases where somebody buys an RV and that's the their they're forever RV, but most of the time you buy an RV and you, you find out that you don't like this or that about it and you go and get another one. You don't know until you actually get out there and, and use it and live in it and travel with it to yeah. realize, well, yeah. maybe a fifth wheel isn't for me. Maybe I'm more of a class A person. So that's the other thing you could be doing. If you're not completely free to travel full time, you could start buying your first rig or exploring the different types of rigs to see what's best for you. And it really takes knowing yourself, knowing how far you want to travel, if you like to boondock, if you like to go to campgrounds, and you know, how much space you're comfortable with. I mean, don't you think life is kind of messed up? You know, because we, we know people. Life that, is messy, yeah. <laughs> well, messed up. We know people that spend all their waking hours working to pay for what they own, right? Oh, sure. We yeah. know people with gorgeous houses that are never in their gorgeous houses. Why? Because they're working to pay for their gorgeous yeah. house. It's easy when you live in a home to kind of get caught up in all that quest for stuff. And let's talk about Costco and oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, you, you go in there and you see stuff that you didn't know you needed until you <laughs> saw it. And, and suddenly it's, it's in your shopping cart and, and it's gonna be in your garage or your backyard or your, your living room, whatever. You it's know. gonna be in your closet or whatever. It seems like when you live in a house, and this is the difference between a house and an RV, when you live in a house, it's a quest for more stuff. Let's get a bigger TV. Let's change the, the rug out or repaint the walls or, you know, gut the bathroom. And, you know, there's always something to do to keep up with your neighbors. Let's get a new shiny car. And then you get into that, you get onto that treadmill and, and, and it's hard to step off. It's, it's um, when you have enough, you don't realize that you have enough. Get off that treadmill because it's just stuff. You know, it's just stuff. And when you look back on your life, what is the thing that you really think about? You know, your memories, what's the most meaningful? Usually it's with people, it's with loved ones or, or getting to see the Grand Canyon or going out and seeing Mount Rainier and, you know, Glacier, all those wonderful national parks. Yeah, go and look at more rocks. <laughs> One of the things that I see is, you know, some people are afraid to give up their home. Yeah. I mean, the, the real difference between living in a house and living in an RV is that you, in your RV life, it's a focus on experiences. It's a focus on living and getting out there and having those experiences of seeing things that you want to see or hiking or, you know, dune buggy riding, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, bike rides. 
So this life is a simpler life in that you're not questing to get more stuff. You're questing to get more experiences. Yeah, this life forces you to slow down. And yeah. you appreciate the sunsets and the sunrises and, yeah. and nature. If you don't know, Paul and I were solo for a year and we actually met on the road. And when I was solo, I had neighbors. When they arrived, I watched them arrive. And the wife had difficulty parking. And I'm watching the husband. He's in the passenger seat and he doesn't get out and help her. And then I look out later and she's parked. And now she's doing all the setup and the husband is still in that passenger seat. And I'm like, come on. And then I look out a third time and she gets a wheelchair out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the husband was in a wheelchair. And I talked to her about a day or two later and she told me that this was her husband's farewell tour. He had a terminal illness and they were driving across the country one last time to say goodbye to everybody and also give him just a taste of his RV dream. An incredibly sad story, but you know, at least he was doing what he what he loved at the end of his life. And we just don't want you to wait until the very end. You never know what's around the corner. So live your life today. Don't yeah. wait until tomorrow to next week to another, you know, next year to, to, to live your dream. Try to, try to do it now. Well, we know people that have been dreaming about RV life for years and then they finally get out here and what do they say? Why did it take me so long to get out <laughs> yeah. here? Why didn't I get out here sooner, right? So we have made three videos that we think that will help you make your decision about RV life. The first one is titled, Is RV Life For You? It's about couples and can you as a couple live in an RV? The second one is pros and cons of solo RV life. Yeah, I did that when I was solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah right, before, uh, right before you broke your hand and I came to the rescue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you don't know that story, we'll put that there below. And then the third video that we think will be helpful is about the downsides of RV life. We keep it real and we talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of RV life. If you're not out here and you're thinking about it, but you're afraid of coming out here, tell us what, what scares you about this life. Put it in the comments. Throw your, throw your fears out there and the A-team well, I'm sure we'll chime in and um, help try to help assuage that, that fear that you have. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. So let us know what's holding you back and maybe we can help. And we'll see you in the next video or maybe we'll see you in the RV park. <laughs> that would be perfect.